Hello everyone, your boy is back doing another morning recording so his roommate doesn't find out about his channel. Additionally, I'm feeling a lot of self-pity and shame today because I'm extremely hungover after a night of heavy drinking and then ultimately killing my diet by getting 7-Eleven taquitos. With that being said, this acts as a perfect time for me to make a very quick video about gossip protocol so we can talk about Cassandra tomorrow. Let's get into this because I want to be done. Alrighty, gossip protocols, what is it? Anytime that we have a bunch of nodes in any different type of cluster, a lot of times we want to be able to pass information directly from node to node. This is basically in, um, in contrast to something like a coordination or a membership service, which is one centralized and perhaps even consensus service if you want it to be fault tolerant, which keeps track of information about nodes in a cluster. Uh, like I said, gossip protocols are when nodes actually pass information directly amongst themselves, and it's kind of modeled after the spread of an infectious disease, which means that each node is going to pass some information to another node, which passes some information to a few other nodes, and, you know, the, the goal is to get it to spread quickly over time. Uh, the reason why this is useful, um, in, at least in my case, is that, like I said, tomorrow I want to make a video about Apache Cassandra, and Cassandra uses Gossip Protocol um, as kind of its main method of determining nodes in the cluster and whether or not they've failed. So I think I'm going to quickly explain Gossip Protocol, and then we can do a deeper dive into Cassandra tomorrow. Okay, so let's visualize it. It's pretty simple for the most part. All we're going to do is pick a few nodes randomly, broadcast any message that the original node has to them. Uh, keep in mind, um, the only time you're going to be doing new broadcasts is on the first time you receive the message. So, we have this black node here. This is the first one to have the message, you know, say it, it gets some heartbeat from another node, and it's like, okay, I want to tell all the other nodes that I just received this heartbeat. So we're going to pick two nodes randomly and broadcast it to them. Okay, so as you can see, now we have two other infected nodes both of which are going to also tell two nodes. Now you can see the top node here is going to tell the original node again, just randomly. So the original node is not going to rebroadcast, um, but it is the case that the, um, that the top node is still going to reach one other new node. So now we've got three new nodes infected in the next round, which are going to go ahead and randomly keep trying to tell other nodes, and eventually, boom, okay. Everyone knows about the message, which is great. As you can see in large clusters, after a few rounds of running this gossip protocol, we can generally get our messages all around. So why is this useful in Cassandra? Well, basically, it's used to pass details about um, node membership and failure in a cluster. So what are we actually passing in the gossip protocol? Each node is basically gossiping with the other nodes regarding its own load. So it's saying, here's my local state. This is how I'm doing in terms of, you know, like, how many writes I'm taking in, and um, you know if I'm kind of like looking like I'm going to crash soon. Each node is also receiving heartbeats from other nodes um, incrementally via this gossip protocol, and it's going and saying, "Okay, I've received a heartbeat. Here's the timestamp of the heartbeat that I received." And um, keep in mind, though, that obviously the issue with these timestamps is that um, server timestamps are not always coordinated, so that can be problematic there in terms of ordering the messages. But that's just something to keep in mind. And then other nodes, upon receiving the gossip, will use those timestamps to basically say, okay, you know, I see that um, node 1 received a heartbeat at 12 o'clock, but node 2 received a heartbeat from this other node at 1 o'clock, so I'll keep the 1 o'clock timestamp, and that's the most recent anyone's ever heard from that node. And so it's going to hold on to that timestamp and basically use those timestamps for each node locally to try and guess if that node is still up or not. So if all of the nodes are assuming that a node is down because no one's received a heartbeat from it in, say, an hour, then eventually they'll stop sending writes to it. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically how Gossip Protocol gets used in Cassandra, but generally speaking, Gossip Protocol is just a good low overhead system for communicating messages to a bunch of nodes in a cluster, and it's got relatively low overhead and coordination. We're not using any membership services. Um, it's really good for using uh, or for doing failure detection, like I said, but um, obviously it's not perfect. It's not every node is reaching consensus at the same exact time. It's going to take a bit for those messages to get propagated. And then furthermore, the messages are not being delivered in order. If a bunch of nodes are gossiping their own messages, then those can come in out of order and you have to use something like timestamps or vector clocks to perform the ordering of the messages and determine which to keep and which to throw away. Okay, that was a quick one. Um, I'm actually dying right now, so yeah, have a good one, and I'll speak to you guys later.